the children sing a song of liberation. The God of our salvation set us free. Death, where is thy sting? The curse of sin is broken. The empty tomb stands open. Come and see. He's alive, 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 hallelujah, alive, praise and glory to the Lamb, alive, 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 hallelujah, alive forever, amen. Let my heart sing out for Christ the one and only, so powerful and holy rescued me. Death won't hurt me now because he has redeemed me. No grave will ever keep me from my King. I'm alive, 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 hallelujah, alive, praise and glory to the the one who has overcome the grave let the people dance let the people sing worthy is the mighty king worthy is the lamb worthy of our praise worthy is the one who has overcome the grave let the people dance let the people sing worthy is the mighty king alive 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 hallelujah alive praise and glory to the lamb Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship on the second Sunday of Easter. Everybody okay? It was so quiet in here before the service. Our focus this morning will be on our gospel lesson, which is John's account of the appearance of the risen Jesus to the disciples on Easter evening, first without Thomas, and then a week later with Thomas in their midst. And although the story is very familiar to us, God wants to help us to hear it with fresh ears and new and welcoming hearts, so that like the disciples through the power of the Spirit, we might be freed from our fear and filled with rejoicing at his unfailing presence among us. Please make sure that you have signed the guest pads and pass them along and greet those with whom you are worshiping. Number of announcements, I'll try and go through them quickly. First of all, again, thank you to the band for filling in this morning as they did yesterday. Um, they will uh, be here next Sunday and then off the weekend after that. Dan will be playing his last uh, two services next weekend, uh, and then we will be looking for somebody to fill in. Donna Mitchell has given us the names of some people, and so we're exploring the possibility of finding some of them. Uh, so keep that in your prayers. Uh, a quick update on Vernon. As you know, sadly, tragically, he died last Sunday on Easter morning. Talked to Averill earlier in the week. Uh, Vernon's wishes were to be cremated and not to have a funeral service, although he did tell Averill if he wanted a memorial later on that that could happen. So that may be uh, down the road, and we'll let you know about that. Unfortunately, Averill can't do anything because the doctor who needs to sign the death certificate is in the Bahamas for the next couple of weeks. So everything is on hold, but as we learn more about that, we'll let you know. Um, there is coffee hour downstairs after the service. We hope to see you there. A reminder, if you have any items for the May newsletter, please get those into Pastor Pamela this weekend. 
Uh, the blood drive is on the 27th. How to participate in that is in your insert. The next give back night is this Tuesday, the 18th at Holly's. You will need the coupon in the insert for that. And uh, because last week was Easter, normally we would have done healing on the second Sunday. We'll do it this morning. So if you would like to receive the laying on of hands as you come up for the distribution, I will be at either side for that. With that, I think we are ready to begin with the uh, Thanksgiving for baptism. So as you are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life, for water to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in, and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for water from our tap, for rain and snow, for water from our rivers and lakes. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family through the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our brothers and sisters in Christ whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound. We give you thanks for life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people sent out for the life of the world. Our gathering song is in the white binder in your pew rack. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. First reading from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the people. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to hate, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us up to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned at Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that of our and, and of that, all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Amen. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. Oh, my delight is in the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among them. But those who run after our gods shall have their troubles multiplied. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled, unfattened, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even now for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though is perishable, is tested by fire, 
may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Do you believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen, but have yet come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O risen Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year, we encounter Thomas the week after Easter, and we might rightfully wonder why. Surely, after all these hearings, we know this story, or do we? Clearly, the Church is trying to teach us something by this repetition. Just as clearly, this isn't only about Thomas. The story is told again and again because we need to hear it. God has a goal, John told us. The sense of the verb there is that he wants to help us to continually believe in Jesus so that we may have life in his name. We stay anchored in Jesus so that through that same spirit given to the disciples, we might take on the power and characteristics of Jesus and share that Easter life with others. That one word, believe, is the key to this whole story and to being brought toward that goal. Unfortunately, most English translations contrast it with doubt, hence the unfortunate nickname, Doubting Thomas. But the original word is much stronger. It means, don't be faithless. There's a big difference. Because in John's Gospel, faith is never a noun. It's not, as we all assume, a series of religious ideas or concepts to which we must intellectually agree. No, rather, in John, faith is always a verb. It is actively living in relationship with Jesus. 
Jesus creates that relationship, he maintains it, and as we hope, he will continually strengthen it. That's why earlier Jesus used the word abide, or to remain, or to stay, when describing first the bond between the Father and the Son, and then also their bond with us whom they have named and claimed as their own. Like those doors in the house, we are now locked in with them forever. And that is also the good news of the most famous verse of this gospel, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes or abides or remains or stays in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Nothing can destroy that bond, that connection, that relationship. Not death, not hell, not the grave could keep Jesus from you. So, of course, he comes back the next week when Thomas is with the disciples, because earlier Jesus had said that it was the Father's will that he not lose any of those whom the Father had given him. Not Thomas, not you or me. Jesus will do whatever it takes, even walking out of the tomb, to make sure that Thomas abides, remains, stays in his embrace, his heart, his undefeatable love. And the good news is that what Jesus did for Thomas, so now he will also do for you. Jesus will walk through any door of the doctor's office after frightening test results, of the cancer center during chemotherapy, of the physical rehab facility during therapy there, through the hospital doors after a stroke or heart attack or COVID or pneumonia or some kind of an infection. He will even walk through the doors of a funeral establishment to make sure that you abide, remain, stay in his embrace and heart and undefeatable love. And Jesus promises that you will be blessed through such believing with his own life and hope and strength and courage and meaning and purpose. And then he sends us out each week from behind our locked doors and hearts to others who were lost and lonely and afraid and hopeless. Jesus found life by giving his away, and so we may have life by doing the same. It's not really clear from the text whether Thomas ever really did touch Jesus, but you may this morning, just as he touches you with healing hands and oil and prayer. So come, reach out your hand, for here is life. Here is Jesus all for you. Believe that.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We We believe believe in in one one God, God, the Father, Father, the the Almighty, Almighty, maker maker of of heaven heaven and and earth, earth, of all all that that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe believe in in one Lord, Lord, Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, the the only only Son of God, God, eternally eternally begotten begotten of the the Father, Father, God God from God, God, light light from light, light, true true God God from true true God, God, begotten, begotten, not made, of of one one being with with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down down from from heaven. heaven. By By the the power of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, he became became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Like Thomas, we are encouraged by the Lord's presence And so we offer God our petitions for the church, the world, and all those in need. That, like Peter, the church may be courageous and faithful witnesses to the resurrection. We pray, hear us, risen Lord, that the Lord's gift of peace may be known even where the doors of nations seem locked by terrorism, violence, and bloodshed. We pray, hear us, risen Lord that in this week we might be bearers of Christ's gift of forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray, hear us, risen Lord, that those who are frightened and anxious, doubting or ill, especially Lynn Nevels, Venia Wendt, Donna Bostadder, Mark Tannehill, Lucille Tyron, Maggie Martin, Jess Calvitas, Christine Kaiser, Christian Martinez, Edward Kleinschmidt and Joanne Kring might be upheld by God in hope and joy, we pray. Hear us, risen Lord. That those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Vernon Carey, who died in the Lord this week, may be comforted by the promise of resurrection to life everlasting and of being reunited with those they love before the throne of the Lamb, we pray. Hear us, risen Lord, that those celebrating birthdays, especially Jean Kleinschmidt, and anniversaries, especially Tim and Stacy Crozier, might grow in grace this day and be filled with grace for the days ahead. We pray, hear us, risen Lord, that with all the faithful who have gone before us, we too may one day come forever into the presence of the risen Jesus, our Lord and our God, We pray, hear us, risen Lord. Loving God, your risen Son, open Thomas to faith. By the power of your Holy Spirit, open us to the faith of our ancestors so that we too may share the resurrection of your Son. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The risen Christ stood among the disciples and said, Peace be with you. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Keeping good distance, let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
You have given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. We offer our lives back to you with praise and thanks and adoration. By this holy sacrament, grant us fullness of joy, genuineness of faith, and peace in your presence, now and forever. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, the risen Christ intercedes on our behalf before the throne of God. Let us therefore join him in his prayers, in the words he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Abide in me, and I abide in you. Blessed are those who were called to the supper of the Lamb, God's holy gifts, for God's holy people. Come, for all is now ready.
as you are able, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Risen Lord Jesus, you have again calmed our fears and satisfied our hunger. Send us now in the power of your spirit as signs of your hope and salvation for the world. Protect us by your power in all our trials and testings, and keep us firm in faith and trust until your salvation is revealed. You are the Lord forevermore. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>